you need to create something called the global application class. And when the application starts up, we need to enable the system to support this kind of new caching. One line of code, it's under uh, system SQL, system data, SQL client dot SQL, uh, SQL dependency dot start and the name of the connection string. And the connection string comes from our configuration manager. Connection strings and W connection string. Okay. Now we can hit refresh and that should work. Now it looks the same here, but the traffic going back and forth is going to be much simpler. In fact, there's nothing, there's no polling going on at this point. So once we hit our 20 second window, you see the refresh, and again, it's a very quiet communication. If we do go and change the data, and hit refresh, it shows up right away. So we get the benefit of this page invalidation at a table level, but it with a lot less traffic going back and forth between the systems, so we don't have the polling going on. So you've seen with this video, the output caching for the whole page that's been around for a while, and two techniques to enable table level caching. The polling mechanism that's working with SQL Server 2000 and 2005, and the new feature for 2005 only, which uses the broker service called the command notification. Try using this technique today to enable better performance for your next web application. Welcome to part two of the ASP.NET video on caching. Part one dealt with output caching. This video is going to talk about partial page caching, which is a new feature in ASP.NET 2.0. And also, we're going to show you how to use the cache API directly. So to start with, I will create a new website. And we'll call this cache2. And I'm going to need um, a couple of files that I, I uh, showed in the previous video. Under my caching files, I use a style sheet and a time label control. Since we want to show um, a page when a page has been refreshed, we have a nice little component here, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is all about partial page caching. So let me drop this control on the page right off the bat, and we'll go take a look at it. It just shows the time of day and it uses a style sheet to make it look a little bit nicer. So, we'll show the page. So every, whenever we get the seconds tick over, it's showing eight. You, you can see every time I hit refresh, the green bar goes up. Okay, so we're going to be building off this concept. So let me remove this and go back to the design layout. Um, I'm going to insert a table with um, four rows and three columns and a little bit of cell padding to give us some room. Let me drop this time label back here in the middle, and this is, I'll just call it time now. Okay. So that's our, f what, what we want to do now is show, in the previous video I showed how to cache the entire page, but in this case we're going to show you how you can take a user control and have just its contents cached. Now by default the time label control is very simple. It just has a label, a little chunk of HTML with a div tag and a label. And when that particular control loads it just gets the current date and time and sticks it in the label text. And it also does some, some magic here to set the width of the uh, style tag. So let me close that. I'm going to make a copy of this and call the control time label number two and make a small modification to it. We can do page, we can do caching directly in the control using the same syntax as before, output cache, and I'll set the duration for this one equal to six seconds. We don't want it too long for this. And again we'll do the vary by param, so any modifications, it doesn't matter what the query string looks like, it's going to refresh. So I'll close that time label and drag it right into the middle. So this is our, eh, we'll call it, this is a, it's kind of the page attribute for the control. So now when we view this page, uh, let's see, I think I have a typo here. I need to give this a unique class name, class name number two. So back on the, let me just delete this and drag it back in.
Okay, watch when I hit refresh. The top control is going to refresh for every second. The bottom one will catch up every six seconds. So you can see it just got back in sync. So this shows this component right here is being cached, but every six seconds it's going to be invalidated and shows up with it. Um, this this is not using the code behind model. This has the code and the control all with it. If you are using a code behind model, it might look something like this. I'll create a new web user control. I'll do this one from scratch and call it time control 3, but I'll put the code in a separate file. And I still need the HTML from there, and I'll just paste it right here. And that's good. Now let's go look at the source code for this time control. I'm going to need this page load code, and I will paste that inside my component here. But first I need a page event. There's the load method. And then I can paste it right in. So now, now I have time control three it looks just like time. Oh, I, I called it time control. Time control three looks just like time label. Now right here above the class, I can put in a class level attribute called partial cache, partial caching, and I pass in the uh, variable of. Let's see, I did the other one for six seconds. I'll do this one for double that or twelve, and that's it. So I'll save that, and I'll drop it back into that form. Right here, I'll call it class attribute. So to show there's two different ways to do it. Okay, here we go. You'll see the middle one will catch up to the top one in just a second. There it is. And the bottom class attribute will catch up with the two of them. There we go. So they're all caught up. So there's several different ways to do it depending on how your class is built. Now, let's keep going. We're going to add caching to the entire page, which I showed in the first caching video. output cache. So you can see what it does if we do it here. I'll set the duration to something small like just three seconds. And vary by param. Got to have that. Okay, now it's getting a little complicated because we have all different layers of caching, but by default none of them are cached. If I hit refresh, see as I'm hitting it every three seconds it cycles the whole page. Now, I did this because I want to set up the final thing I want to show you for partial page caching. If you have a chunk of code or a, a method that you want executed irrespective of what the page level cache is set for, well, there is a new control to control that. Let me go back to the design mode and drop in this thing called the substitution control. I'll bring it here and let me, uh, actually let me do this. I'll merge these two cells, then drop the substitution control in. Now the substitution control will execute a, uh, a, a some arbitrary method. I just need to return a string, and the method name will be I'll just call it get date or get yeah get date time. Okay, we switch to the source mode. Now we need a little bit of uh, script code here that I have sitting here in this file. Let me paste it in. I'll explain it. So, oh actually I I called it get real time. Let me change that. So the method that it's going to call, get real time, is at the top of this page, and it's past the HTTP context, which we're using as a way to return back the uncached time for the page. It's, it's easier just to show it to you than try to explain it. Let me hit refresh here. So remember I have the page set to cache every three seconds, but every time I hit refresh, this guy's ticking up. So it doesn't matter what the page level cache was, the substitution control will just punch through that and give you this somewhat complicated page with four levels of caching, but um, I wanted to show you here how you can do different partial caching, uh, the different ways of doing it for your own user controls. So I'm going to close this page and move on to the cache API. 